In this video, we're going to continue our discussions on um, gas heating and we're going to talk a little bit about combustion. It's important to understand the combustion process so that when you're a technician on a job site diagnosing equipment, you can actually understand what's happening and what's supposed to happen. Once you know how it's supposed to work, you can find out the per you can identify the problems very easily. So what is combustion? Combustion is a chemical process called rapid oxidization in which fuel and oxygen produce heat and light. Combustion fuels most commonly used in heating appliances are natural gas, liquefied petroleum, otherwise known as LP, and oil. You have to have three basic elements for combustion to occur, fuel, heat, and oxygen. Those three elements make up the triangle of combustion, fuel, heat, and oxygen. Heat is required to initiate the reaction as the fuel and oxygen combine. Then heat and light energy is released. Okay, just to show you, there's a um, chemical formula that shows the process of combustion. Okay, now sto stoichiometric combustion basically is complete combustion. Okay, and this complete combustion only happens in a laboratory environment. You cannot get perfect combustion in the field. So if you combine your methane and oxygen, you produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Don't worry much about that formula. Okay, but it's a chemical reaction between methane and oxygen that is caused by heat that produces carbon dioxide and water. So when we ask you what the products of combustion are, it's carbon dioxide, water, heat, and light. Stoichiometric combustion is a term for perfect combustion. When perfect combustion, the burning of fuel occurs with the exact amount of oxygen needed to change the carbon and hydrogen molecules into water and carbon dioxide. Gas furnaces can almost never achieve perfect combustion, but they can achieve something we call complete combustion. Complete combustion occurs when the fuel is burned in the presence of excess oxygen to produce water and carbon dioxide. We must understand the perfect combustion formula in order to analyze the combustion process. In the perfect combustion formula, the ratio of oxygen to fuel is 2 to 1, and the only products of combustion are carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Heat. A concentration of heat is needed to start the chemical process of combustion. The heat required to initiate combustion is called the ignition temperature. The ignition temperature is usually either provided by a pilot light or a heated surface such as a hot surface igniter. And I'm going to add a spark into this because sometimes we use spark ignition. The ignition temperature of natural gas is between 1100 and 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. The ignition temperature of LP gas is between 920 and 1020 degrees. Once combustion has begun, chemical energy in the fuel is released and converted to heat and light energy. As long as the fuel and oxygen are present in the correct ratio, no additional external input of heat is needed to sustain combustion because the heat generated is enough to sustain combustion. Combustion can only occur when the ratio of air to fuel is within an acceptable range. The ideal ratio of oxygen to methane is 2 to 1. The ratio of air to fuel must be much higher, about 10 to 1 for methane. The higher the, ra the higher ratio is because air is made up of 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. In a mixture of fuel and air, the fuel's flammability limits are defined as within the range of fuel concentrations within the fuel will burn when ignition source is present. Okay, You can actually have too much fuel and it won't burn. You can have too little fuel and it won't burn. The flammability limits is the high and low limit of the fuel to air ratio where combustion can occur. 
Okay, so each fuel source has its own unique flammability limit that's required for combustion. Methane, okay, 14% is as high you can go, 5.3 is as low you can go. Anything outside these ranges, the fuel will not burn. If we look, we'll see that in order for combustion to occur, natural gas, the fuel-air mixture, must have a concentration of natural gas between 4 and 14%. The ideal concentration is between 8 and 10. A concentration of less than 4 is too lean, which means there's not enough fuel for combustion. A concentration of more than 14% creates a mixture that's too rich, which means there's not enough oxygen available for all of the fuel. The amount of air required for combustion is different for each fuel source. Primary air is the air that's mixed with the fuel prior to ignition. There must be enough primary air available to support ignition. As oxygen is consumed during the combustion process, it has to be replaced. Secondary air is the air that's added to the flame after ignition to support combustion. Secondary air surrounds the outermost areas of the flame and maintains the combustion process. Primary air and secondary air are commonly referred to as combustion air, which is the air needed for complete combustion. So when we look at the gas burner, okay, we mix primary air into the gas into the gas as it comes out of the orifice, which is right here. Okay, we mix it together in an area called the venturi, and then we push it up into the burner where it starts burning at the top of the burner. That's primary air. Secondary air is around the burner. Okay, we have the burner, we have the gas air mixture in the burner, and we have our flames at the top of the burner. Secondary air is around the burner and helps support the combustion process. All fuels containing hydrogen and carbon atoms in different amounts. Substances that contain only hydrogen and carbon are referenced as hydrocarbons. Since hydrogen burns more quickly at a lower temperature than carbon, hydrogen burns first using the oxygen from the air that's needed for complete combustion. Hydrogen flames are a bluish color. Since the hydrogen in fuel burns before the carbon, Carbon atoms must travel to the outermost edges of the flame to get oxygen from the secondary air to, for complete combustion to occur. Carbon atoms burn more slowly and at a higher temperature than hydrogen. A carbon flame produces bright yellow light or a flame. Flame color can indicate when proper amounts of primary air are present in a gas furnace. A perfect flame should have a blue inner core surrounded by lighter blue. This indicates there are no unburned carbon atoms. Incomplete combustion occurs when a flame does not receive enough oxygen to finish the combustion process. Incomplete combustion is pretty dangerous. If there's not enough primary air, the flame tip will be yellow. The yellow tip is due to carbon particles that are not burned. If the outer edge of the flame burns orange, it is due to the burning of the dust particles drawn in with primary air. It is not a sign of lack of air. We're looking for yellow tips. That is a sign of lack of air. Okay, so we have incomplete combustion versus complete combustion. Okay, Inco number one is a bad flame. Number two is a bad flame. Number three is okay. And number four is perfect combustion. Carbon monoxide is a byproduct of incomplete combustion and is a colorless and odorless, highly toxic gas that can be fatal in buildings. This is why incomplete combustion is so dangerous. All service calls should include an inspection of the flame during operation to check for incomplete combustion. All heat exchangers should be inspected for cracks as well. Carbon monoxide levels should be checked with a carbon monoxide meter. Too much carbon monoxide, which is CO, in the blood can cause the person to die from lack of oxygen. 
Before dying, the person will feel tired and may fall asleep without knowing they're being suffocated due to lack of oxygen. CO has now been associated with Alzheimer's and attention deficit disorder. There are two types of fuels primarily used in gas furnaces. We have natural gas and liquefied petroleum. Natural gas is obtained from gas deposits in the ground. It's lighter than air and consists of about 95% methane and 5% ethane and other hydrocarbons. It has a heating value of about 1,000 BTUs per cubic foot and 1,100 BTUs per cubic foot. To burn one cubic foot of natural gas, 10 cubic fair feet of air is needed. However, some excess air is needed to prevent incomplete combustion from occurring. Therefore, 15 cubic feet of air is used for each cubic foot of natural gas, which provides about 50% excess air. If you're ever taking a certification test, you absolutely have to know 10 cubic feet of air is needed for complete combustion. Okay, but we need to, for under normal conditions, we need to provide 15 cubic feet of air per cubic foot of natural gas. Excess air is any secondary air that exceeds the amount of air necessary for complete combustion. By designing furnaces to take certain amount of excess air, manufacturers provide a safety buffer in case of damage or malfunction that impedes the airflow and reduces the amount of air needed for combustion. Furnaces with lower efficiency ratings take between 20 and 50 percent excess air to ensure complete combustion. Higher efficiency furnaces use as little as 10 percent excess air. Excess air is also important for condensing furnaces as it reduces the dew point of the flue gas. Dew point is which at the temperature with gas condenses to a liquid. By reducing the dew point, excess air causes the flue gas to condensate at a lower temperature, ensuring the furnace will capture the heat of condensation from the flue gas. Remember, condensing furnaces actually capture the latent heat that occurs when we condense a gas to a liquid. As a mixture, as a mix of one cubic foot of natural gas and 15 cubic foot of air burns, it yields about one cubic foot of carbon dioxide and two cubic foot of water vapor. It also yields 12 cubic feet of nitrogen and one cubic foot of oxygen, which is our leftovers from the excess air used in the combustion process. Remember, when we burn gas, it does generate water vapor. Condensing furnaces condense that water vapor. The water from the water vapor runs off into a condensate drain, and we capture that heat of condensation. If the furnace is not designed to condensate the water vapor, the flue gas gets low enough, the water will corrode the flue and cause the combustion process to leak into the space. Condensation of water be begins between 180 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. If there's not enough primary air, the flame will be noisy and jump around above the burner. If the exhaust contains carbon monoxide, there is either too little or too much combustion air. You do not want carbon monoxide. Liquefied petroleum gases, LP gas, consists of liquefied petroleum and butane. It's mostly propane with some butane. LP gas is heavier than air, and it can easily li be liquefied under pressure, stored and transported in cylinders and tanks. When the pressure is reduced as the LP gas leaves the tank, it vaporizes and changes its gaseous form before it's burned. Propane boils at negative 44 degrees Fahrenheit at atmospheric pressure and has a heating value of 2,500 BTUs per cubic foot. Butane boils at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and has a heating value of 3,200 BTUs per cubic foot. LP gas can produce more heat per pound of natural gas, but it requires more oxygen for complete combustion. To work burn one cubic foot of LP gas, 24 cubic foot of oxygen is required, and that's perfect combustion. We need to provide about 35 cubic foot of air for one cubic foot of natural or na pu of one cubic foot of propane to provide 50 percent excess air. So you have two excess air, you have two air requirements, one for complete combustion or perfect combustion and one for 
complete combustion. Pro propane requires 32.5 cubic feet of air for each cubic foot of gas. Butane requires 45 cubic feet of air for each cubic foot of gas. So that's the combustion process. Again, we combine gas and air. We generate water vapor. We generate heat. We generate um, light. And we generate carbon dioxide. If we have carbon monoxide, it means we have incomplete combustion. We need to solve that problem. Watch the tips of your flames. Watch flame color because that can tell you a lot about what's happening with the combustion process.